Hi, George here. The show you're about to watch was produced before the pandemic, which explains why no one's wearing a mask. Now, a lot of the places I visit are still in the process of reopening, but once things are safe and back to normal, I highly encourage you to check them out and support them. So with that said, enjoy the show. My name is George Igo, and throughout my entire life, my travel ambitions have always outweighed my bank account. But with some research, planning, and a little creativity, I find the best things to do in a city, all without spending more than $100. This is George Goes Everywhere. Hello and welcome to George Goes Everywhere, the show where we explore a city and see as much of it as we can, all without spending more than $100. I'm in Savannah today, a city that everyone absolutely raves about, so I'm going to see what all the fuss is about. I have six categories I want to hit. History, art, food, drink, nature, and culture. Now I did a ton of research before I got here, and I think I got a pretty good handle on things, so let's see what Savannah can do for the traveler on a budget. Now Savannah is often called one of the most haunted cities in the country, and it's got the landmarks to prove it. There's the Sora Weed House, which many people believe is the most haunted building in town. Then there's the Marshall House, where people have claimed to see Civil War soldiers wandering the hallways, or there's a supposedly haunted warehouse that sits on the site of the Gribble House where a grizzly axe murder took place. So I definitely gotta check out some of that spooky stuff while I'm in town, but that's an activity more suited for the nighttime, so we'll get to that. In the meantime, I'm gonna look back on a chapter of American history far more terrifying than any ghost story. <sighs> history is dark. This is the American Prohibition Museum. It's a little funny that it's in Savannah because everything I've read about this city indicates that it's a place where they enjoy a good drink. So, a little funny that it's here. There are a lot of mannequins here. Way more than I was expecting. It says here, the first income tax was passed the year before Prohibition to replace lost revenue from liquor taxes. <sighs> These guys are sad because of Prohibition. I get it, fellas. I get it. Here we are, rise of the gangster and the mob in Prohibition. Bunch of guns here, thousand dollar bill. Even got a Tommy gun that you can hold. Oh, this is heavy. Yeah. This is a real gun? Oh, yes, that is a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part where you can dance in Charleston. I got my little hat here. We got a TV show in the moves. It's a little unclear, but I'll see if I can do it. Just, just do yeah. this, maybe one of these. Something like this. Yeah, just like that. I can't, I'm tall and white. I can't, I can't dance, that's, that's a rule. Yeah, I don't know why I'm home in a speakeasy in the 20s. So this place ends with a prohibition-style speakeasy that you have to buzz your way into. What do you want? Who sent you? But here's the thing. There's a one-way mirror that looks out onto the people who are dancing the Charleston. So while I was out there dancing my heart out, not a care in the world, looking like an idiot, people were inside the bar laughing at me. This is the most public of my many humiliations. Okay, so yes, this next place is a bar, but that's not why I'm here, I promise. In fact, I'm far more interested in the artwork on the walls than the drinks behind the bar. This place is called Abe's on Lincoln, and the walls are covered with napkins that have drawings of Abe Lincoln on them. And they say that anyone can contribute an Abe drawing so long as it meets their high standards of quality. Now, I'm not much of an artist, but I gotta at least try to make a contribution to their wall. Man, they were not kidding. There are Lincolns all over the walls here. And some of them are actually pretty good. I'm a little intimidated by this. <laughs> I didn't even show my drawing to the bartender. I was ashamed of it. I mean, look at that. Starfish Abe. Honest Abe deserves better. So this is Georgia, and it'd be really easy for me to find a place that served good old-fashioned southern comfort food, but a different type of place caught my eye. This is Zunzi's, a place that serves South African street food. And this is Bunny Chow. It's a hollowed-out loaf of bread filled with curry. From what I've been told, this originated amongst Indian people living in South Africa. And it's really good, but it is spicy, and I'm already sweating like a pig in this southern humidity, so this probably isn't gonna help. Oh, yeah. Here come the curry sweats. Worth it. So one of the first things you notice when you come to Savannah is the town squares. They are seriously everywhere, 22 of them in downtown alone. Remember Forrest Gump sitting on the bench talking to people? Yeah, that was right behind me. Though the bench is no longer there, apparently people kept wandering into the streets to get a good picture of it and were getting hit by cars, so they took it down and put it in a museum. But anyway, all these squares are part of the plan designed by the city's founder, James Oglethorpe, which is why it's called the Oglethorpe Plan. And as I learned at the Prohibition Museum, James Oglethorpe was actually an early proponent of banning alcohol. That's why it's so funny that these squares are also one of the few places in the U.S where you can actually drink alcohol in public. That's right, public drinking is legal in town squares literally named after a guy who fought against alcohol. Which brings us to our next category. So I'm headed to the Pirate's House, which is one of the oldest buildings in Savannah, but it's also a place where people used to be kidnapped and then forced to work on pirate ships. So the Pirate's House is actually kind of a literal name. Now I checked out the drink menu of this place beforehand and there was literally only one drink that I even considered. 
This is rum and assorted fruit juices that comes in a souvenir skull mug that I get to keep. And come on, I drink pretty much anything but it came in a skull mug. And the best part is that because of the city's alcohol laws, I can take it with me and enjoy it in one of the town squares. So the sun has gone down, the bugs have come out, the bunny chow and the rum are duking out in my belly. I can think of no better time than to take a ghost tour of Savannah and hear about its haunted history. So the tour I'm taking gave us these private EMF meters. I'm not quite sure what EMF stands for, electromagnetic something, I don't know. But it supposedly measures like the paranormal activity that's around you. So if there's a ghost around you, it spikes towards red. I don't quite understand how it works, but I like it. Well, look at that, meter's going crazy. I got a ghost around me. Oh no, wait, there it goes. Now it's gone. The ghost said goodbye. Oh well. So there are dozens of ghost tour operators here in Savannah, but I did the research and I went with Ghost Walker Tours because the guy who runs it, Patrick, has been doing this for 25 years. And this was a good choice because you can tell that he really cares. It's not just a job to him. It's something that he's really passionate about. And that passion really comes across in the quality of the tour. So apparently we're standing over some kind of Revolutionary War era cemetery, and this thing is going nuts. You can see it popping into the yellow and the red. So I guess people buried here are stopping by to say hello. I uh, nope, don't, there it goes. I guess, I um, guess the ghost said goodbye. You know, a lot of these ghost stories we're hearing involve a ghost coming back to like make something right. They're trying to right a wrong that happened in their life. It's a real recurring theme. And it's got me thinking, maybe I should write a wrong that's happened in my own life. Awesome. Okay. 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 Okay.